Right, if you've watched my other two videos on um, making my um, milling attachment for my Myford AML7, um, this is the third video now, and I'm going to show the completion of the actual milling spindle. So today I'm going to be showing um, how I'm going to finish off this uh, milling spindle for the Myford ML7 and I'm going to make a component so that I can have full preload adjustment for the bearings, locking and a shaft for the pulley. And I'm going to be making that out of this 20mm um, bolt and two stainless steel half nuts. These are half the width of the normal size nuts you can buy and I bought these on eBay. So if you watch those two videos you would have seen that I'm actually making my spindle shaft out of this already made ER20 um, collet chuck um, component. It has a 150mm long shaft and the shaft is 20mm in diameter. I'm going to be fitting the component in the back of this one so the first thing I need to do is clean the bore inside I've noticed there's a little step inside as well so there's a larger bore at the back here and probably a bore which is about 5 to 10 thou um, smaller in diameter about 10 millimeter down so I need to first clean those two bores with my um, Dremel so the black finish has been thoroughly cleaned off and it's all nice and shiny inside now and I do it first like that because I want to be able to machine this component um, dead accurate uh, fit on that bore. So now I'll show some shortened machine views um, to show how I make this component on the MyFed ML7. So to machine this bolt I'm using my ER40 collet chuck. I've got my 070204 insert tool with a blue nano insert. I faced the bolt off already and um, center drilled it and I'm using the live center and now I'm going to turn the hexagon down. So now that diameter is exactly the same diameter as the actual thread. So now I'm just going to face this end off and centre drill it.
So now I've turned it around again, I've set my stop and now I'm going to turn the two um, different diameters to suit those two bores in the um, ER20 um, collet chuck component. And that one's just going, so that's just right. So now I've got to do the front um, smaller diameter. So that's the two diameters finished and it's a nice tight fit on there I could actually um, knock that one in with a copper mallet and that'll go right the way home um, earlier today I drilled this hole through here with my tool post drill and that one's um, about seven millimeters to the center from the end of the shaft and now I've just put that one up against um, the shoulder and marked it with a marker pen in line with that hole because I'm going to be silver soldering this one into the end of this one I want to take just a couple of thou um, skim there a very light groove and that's to allow for the silver solder to run round So when that one goes on and pushes right home now you can see that that hole will be over that um, shallow groove and then when I heat this up um, red hot I'll be able to run my silver solder into that hole and it'll actually run round that groove and actually lock that component into the end of the shaft. So just before I do the bracing, I'll just show you um, a couple of other things that I've done. Um, I did actually put this in the Chinese mini lathe and polished the bore out again and thoroughly cleaned up the back face here. On the component that I've just made, I've um, created a step in the corner there on this shoulder so that when the component pushes up against the back face of the um, shaft, um, there'll be a small gap for the silver solder to run round and take hold there. So I've just done a quick diagram of that. Um, this is the shaft. Um, this is the threaded component that I've just made. And there is a shoulder um, so it, it won't go into that bore. It creates a gap here about two or three thou wide. Um, for that silver solder to run round and adhere to both faces. So 
So I'm going to be using this silver solder wire which is uh, 1.5mm in diameter and it's got a 55% content of silver and the melting range starts at about 630 centigrade which is ideal for this bullfinch propane gas torch. This is the auto torch braiding system and I think it's one of the best gas torches you can get and is ideal for this type of work. And when you use silver solder like this, you need um, a flux. Um, sometimes you can get them uh, like flux coated rods. I use those sometimes, but I'm just using the straight um, wire this time. So the flux is um, powder form and it's made by Johnson Matthey and it's called Easy Flow. Um, you don't need a lot of it. I just mix up a small amount in a bottle cap. And one other thing um, you have to remember with brazing, if you're new to brazing, or welding the components need to be thoroughly clean so I use a solvent um, to clean inside there and the end face you can see there's uh, still a bit of dirt in that one so now that one's thoroughly clean and ready for the brazing. And I'm going to do the brazing on the lathe so this end can go in the collet chuck. I use um, one of my old live centers to center that up. I then check the concentricity at this end here and if it's out you can um, turn the chuck and give it a tap with a um, soft mallet and get that right. I've got this one to within a thou. And I have this thick piece of aluminium plate at the back here to protect everything and I put a piece of 12mm um, thick uh, plate or something like that on the ways to protect those. So I've mixed up my um, flux paste um, in a bottle cap. All I do is put um, probably um, a third of a teaspoon into the bottle cap, a few drips of water from a syringe and then mix it up with a cotton bud. Um, that can take out the excess water and then just uh, put it all around the uh, place where it's going to be um, braised. And that brazing powder is uh, quite expensive, so it actually pays to do it like this for a small job. And that's it. And I never um, dip it in water to cool it, I just let it cool um, naturally. I can see a good witness of um, braise all the way round. Plus it's also filled up the hole.
So it's been cooling for a while now, still too hot to handle, but while it's on the machine I can actually clean that brazing joint up. So now I've set it up in the four door independent chuck and I'm turning the diameter down for the pulley. And that's it. So now it's all deburred, cleaned up and ready to assemble. You can see the nice witness of braise around the end there. And now we're going to put some molly grease on the tapered roller bearing I made this um, back cover up and then the preload locking nuts. And I found when I'm doing bearings like this, um, I just tighten it down a finger tight and maybe uh, back it off very slightly. But that feels really good. There's no movement in that at all. Feels brilliant. Uh, 
and you do actually get a feel for the uh, bearings you've got to um, tighten the other one up like I've just shown there lock it together and then feel again um, that it's not too tight that one feels perfect so like I said I, I like to do mine just up finger tight and then try locking up and seeing what it's like then So then this is my Myford milling slide and the plate that I made up to hold the uh, bracket for the matchy fit motor. Very simple and easy to make up. And then the spindle housing will be clamped in that one and I can move it up and down and lock it in any position that I want. So the only thing I have to do now is um, make up a plastic cover for the front end to stop Swarf getting in there. And then I'm going to push the bearing out of this one and make up a, a bush to actually fit that one. Or I might make a new aluminium pulley. And then all that I have to make is the frame to hold the motor on the lathe and rig up the pulley system but so far i must say that i'm very pleased with how it's turned out 